All right, we're going to talk about um, trigonometry and um, of right triangles. And so I think you've learned up until this point um, Sokotoa, oh, sorry, um, Pythagorean theorem, which helps you find missing side lengths in right triangles. We're going to find, uh, we're going to talk about another way to find missing side lengths and how the side lengths of triangles are related to the angles within triangles. So remember um, that a right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle in it. Everything that we talk about today is going to be related to right triangles, right? So everything I say is only going to apply if there is a 90 degree angle within the triangle, okay? So before we define the, the, the three main trig ratios here, um, I wanna give you, uh, I guess, a, a situation here. Suppose we have a triangle, a right triangle, and one of the angles is 30 degrees. 90 degrees, the other one would have to be 60, right? Because all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. Suppose one side length is, this short side here is one, and the hypotenuse here is two, okay? If we take this triangle and we, um, if, if we scale it up by a factor of two, in other words, we double all of the side lengths, here's what happens to the angles. The angles remain the same. These triangles are called similar triangles. You might remember that from geometry. Okay, so these triangles are similar. They have the same angles. If we double everything, then we end up with a side length here of two and hypotenuse of uh, four. Sorry, hypotenuse of four. All right. It turns out that the ratio of this side length, which is opposite of 30 degrees, and the hypotenuse, the, re the ratio there, is the same for each triangle. In other words, you know, we don't really have an, I haven't named it yet, but you know, something of 30 that represents the ratio between the opposite side of the angle and the hypotenuse is one over two here. And that same something of 30, whatever that function of 30 is, over here it's equal to the opposite, which is two over four, so two over four, which is one over two, okay? so. The ratio of the opposite side of 30 to the hypotenuse in a 36 in, in this triangle is the same regardless of how big the triangle is. In other words, if we had a name for that, then we could, we could write down or we could know that that value was always the same, no matter, which, um, no matter what size the triangle is. The name for that, it turns out, is sine. Okay. So sine, so we write it like this, S-I-N, we abbreviate it, of 30 is equal to 1 half. And that's powerful because sine of 30 is always 1 half. All right, it will always simplify to 1 half. So sine is just the name for the ratio of the opposite side of an angle to the hypotenuse, um, the opposite side in a triangle of an angle to the hypotenuse, right? And there are three trig ratios that we're gonna talk about, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, and so let's, let's just look at angle R here. All right, so we'll kind of analyze angle R. The sine of angle R is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse side. Let's first actually talk about labeling um, related sides here. So whatever angle you're labeling in reference to, um, I always start off by naming or uh, labeling in the triangle the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is the side that's always the longest side. It's always opposite the 90 degree angle. Okay. Then in reference to angle R down here, I always go to the opposite side. The opposite side is always opposite of the angle. Okay. So opposite of R is little r over here. So this is the opposite side if we're referencing R. And then the, the third side is the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to, okay? So this is the side that's next to the angle, but is not the hypotenuse, all right? Um, so once I've got that labeled, sine of r is going to be the, um, uh, is going to be opposite, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And that in our, in our triangle that we made up here is r over two. The next one is cosine. Cosine of angle R is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. 
and that is going to be equal to s over t. The last trig ratio is called tangent. Tangent is abbreviated T-A-N. The tangent of R is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. In our example here, it's going to be um, R over um, S. Okay. Now, to remember this, we have this acronym called SOCOTOA. Okay. So, SOCOTOA means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's S-O-H. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, that's C-A-H. T, tangent, is equal to opposite over adjacent, so T-O for opposite, A for adjacent. And when you combine all three of these together, you get this acronym S-O-H, SOCOTOA. Okay. And that can help you remember, if you forget, that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on. Okay. So probably the best thing to do is just to start off looking at um, writing these ratios out for a particular angle in, in a given example here. Okay. So let's look at finding sine of j. First thing I'm going to do is circle the angle that I'm analyzing and then label in reference to that angle. So the hypotenuse I was able first, it's the longest side, it's opposite of the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. Okay. The opposite side is always opposite the angle, so you can see over here, opposite of angle J is 12, that's the opposite side. Over here, then, that must be the adjacent side. I always save the adjacent for last, but you can always remember that adjacent means next to. So it's next to the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Then, I'm going to write the, I'm going to actually answer the question then. So sine of j is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side is 12. And the adjacent side, sorry, the hypotenuse is 20. That simplifies to 3 fifths. Cosine of j is equal to the opposite, excuse me, adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 16 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 20. That ends up being 4 fifths, I think, yep. Last one is tangent of j is equal to um, opposite over adjacent, which is 12 over 16, and that simplifies to be 3 over 4. Okay, and so at some point we will, we will learn um, in this section that we will learn how to figure out what the angle is, because really, remember the power here is that once you establish that sine of an angle or the cosine of an angle or the tangent of an angle, it's true for all um, sizes of triangles that have that angle. So, um, for instance, sine of 30 is always equal to 1 half. Okay. So, let's go down here and we can use the fact that I just mentioned to find missing side lengths. And this is one of the most useful things in um, the Algebra 2 course. I mean, trigonometry was used, um, you know, in the eight, in like the 1800s to survey, uh, to complete the survey of the United States. Um, it's used for, it was used for finding um, heights of mountains. Um, I just used it the other day when I was building a shelf um, for my daughter's bedroom. So um, I, I used tangent. And so it's, it's a really useful tool. And, um, and so let's look at how we can um, actually apply it in the situation. So suppose that I'm missing this side of the triangle here, but I know an angle. So I know 36 degrees here. In reference to 36 degrees, x is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse over here. We're not actually going to need that. But then this is the adjacent side. Very important, when you're trying to decide what trig function to use, or what trig ratio to use to find a missing piece of a triangle, you look at what you have, and what you know, and what you um, are trying to find. So I'm, I'm looking for the opposite side. I know the adjacent side, so I ask myself what trig ratio relates the adjacent and the opposite side. Well, if you go back up here, you can see that it's tangent. Okay, so it's tangent. So um, I'm going to write this: tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite, which is x over seven. All right. Now I can then set this up as an equation because and you can do this in Desmos as well, you will want to first switch your Desmos graph to um, 
you want to switch your Desmos graph to degree mode, it's always defaults to radian mode, which we'll learn later. Um, but you can see when you hit the wrench, you can switch it to degrees. Okay. If you're using, um, and then everything else is the same in Desmos. So here I'm going to I'm going to make sure in the calculator that my mode is in degrees. And then I'm going to write this, tangent of 36. Okay, tangent of 36 is a number. It's just a value. Tangent of 36 is always the same value. Um, so because that's just a number, I can solve for x algebraically. I can write this. I can times both sides by 7. And I get that x is equal to 7 times the tangent of 36. Tangent of 36 is, again, just a number. So I can go right, I can write this, 7 times tangent of 36. And I get that that side length over there is 5.1. So I get x is equal to 5.1. Right? Now, let's go ahead and try another one. It would be a good idea for you to give this one a try. Pause the video and try it. Um, and see how you do. I know 41 degrees is my angle, so I'm going to label in reference to that. So in reference to 41, this is the hypotenuse because it's the side opposite the right angle. This is the opposite side because it's opposite of 41. And this is the adjacent side. All right. Now I'm going to look at what I know and what I'm trying to find out. I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. And I'm trying to figure out the adjacent. So I'm looking. So the trig ratio that relates hypotenuse and adjacent is CAH or cosine. Okay. So cosine of 41, it's always cosine of an angle, tangent of an angle, or um, sine of an angle. Okay, so cosine of 41 is equal to the adjacent side, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 32. Again, seeing cosine of 41, you want to think, okay, that's just a number, right? I can plug that into my calculator and get a number there, kind of like natural log of a number. Um, so to solve this, I can just times both sides by 32. And I get this, x equals 32 cosine 41, so 32 cosine 41, and I get 24.2, so x is 24.2, right? So that's the, the most basic types of problems you'll run into um, for basic trigonometry. And then in the next video, we will talk about inverse trig, which helps us find missing angles as opposed to missing sides, which is what we dealt with.